Yeah, so thank you. So you're right, this is my ninth uh, hit talk. And in the previous ones, I've talked about leadership, about happiness and living with purpose, and other topics. And today I'm going to do something sort of radically different. I want you all to close your eyes and imagine yourself in the ninth century. You're in a small village in Ethiopia. And you actually are, or your brother is, a goat herd. You can open your eyes now. So you're a goat herd. Your name is Kaldi. You're in a small village called Kafa. And you notice that the goats in one particular pasture are very frisky and animated. They're consuming these red brown berries. So Kaldi makes a brew out of it and he really enjoys it. There's a monastery nearby and a monk walks by every evening. He looks at Kaldi and he scolds him. Kaldi, you have partaken of the devil's fruit. And Kaldi ignores him and after a while, the monk says, can I try it? And when he tries it, he's able to stay up for the late night prayers. So this is the legend about coffee. Started in Ethiopia in the ninth century. In the year 1600, a group of well-meaning people petitioned Pope Clement VIII, saying this is truly the devil's drink and you need to ban it. And he said, before I ban it, let me taste it. And when he tasted it, instead he baptized it, proclaiming coffee is so good, the infidels should not have exclusive use of it. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. My specialty is hepatology, liver disease. And some 20 years ago, I was fascinated reading an article that said coffee drinkers had lower levels of liver enzymes. So when you go see your primary care clinician once a year, they check your blood test. They always check a battery of liver tests. So what does that mean? Maybe there's something in coffee, a metabolite that interferes with the assay. But the next study came and said coffee drinkers have less scarring of the liver. If you have lots of scarring, that's called cirrhosis. And that can lead to liver failure, the risk of developing liver cancer. So less scarring. And the next study came out, if you drink two cups of regular coffee a day, 50% reduction in hospitalization and mortality from chronic liver disease. Chronic liver disease afflicts 1.5 billion people in the world. Between alcoholic liver disease, chronic hepatitis B virus infection that afflicts 400 million, chronic hepatitis C, 200 million, and now a dominant disease in Western countries and even developing countries called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So it looks just like alcoholic liver disease under the microscope, but these people are not drinking alcohol. And who are these people? These are people with diabetes and obesity. The estimate is that in our country, in America, there are 100 million Americans afflicted with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. We're starting to see fatty liver in three-year-olds and even scarring in 16-year-olds. In the center I work at Harvard Medical School, it's the number one or two indication for liver transplantation, end-stage liver disease. So the liver is a fascinating organ. You know, in ancient Greek mythology, there's the story of Prometheus. He had stolen fire from the god Zeus, and the god was incensed and chained him to a rock. A vulture would come and devour his liver, but he wouldn't die because the liver would regenerate overnight. Regenerate, it's the only organ that fully regenerates. In fact, 10 to 15% of liver transplantations done in America are from a live donor, a sibling, a parent, even a dear friend. They give the entire right lobe, which is 60% of the liver volume. And then over the next year, when you do CAT scans, you see, can see the liver grow back right up to the right rib cage. And the 60% is sufficient in the recipient to sustain metabolic function in life. So it's an amazing organ. And I've always been fascinated about it. And 
That's why I went into the specialty. 2.25 billion cups of coffee are consumed every day worldwide. 2.25 billion. It's the number one beverage consumed in the world. Coca-Cola has seen the writing and in 2019 bought Costa, a chain coffee shops all over Europe for $5 billion. Pepsi has come on board. They're producing a beverage which is infused with coffee. So in addition to lowering the risk of cirrhosis, alcoholic liver disease, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, the individuals who drink coffee have the least amount of scarring. But it also protects against type 2 diabetes, both in men and women. And here, even decaf coffee has these wonderful benefits. It protects against Parkinson's disease. It may have an effect on cognitive decline and Alzheimer's dementia. It lowers the incidence of gout, dental cavities, suicide, gallstones. It's better for kidney health and bone health. And then seven common cancers, head and neck cancer, breast cancer, endometrial cancer, colon cancer, skin cancer, prostate cancer, and liver cancers. Truly, it is a, a super food. If we had a pill that did this, it'd be a trillion dollar pill. These studies are published in peer reviewed medical journals, validated hundreds and thousands of patients, subjects, long-term follow-up. Now, if it has all these health benefits, the holy grail would be mortality. Do people who drink coffee have lower total mortality? And the first study appeared about eight years ago in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is the premier medical journal in the world. I received about 102 emails that morning from colleagues around the country, around the world. Sanjeev, you've been talking about coffee. You have finally vindicated. And now there are four other studies in, again, prestigious medical journals, Annals of Internal Medicine, Journal of the American Medical Association. Men and women who drink coffee have low total and cause specific mortality. So regular coffee is better than decaf. If you want to put milk or sugar, go ahead and do it. Study from Europe, more than half a million subjects. 10 countries, they all drink their coffee differently. They make it differently, low total and cause specific mortality. So the inflammatory markers that we can test for in the blood, one is called CRP, C-reactive protein. Another is called TNF alpha. And coffee drinkers have lower levels of CRP and TNF alpha. There's something called plasma adiponectin. Low levels are linked with aggressive liver disease. Coffee drinkers have high levels. And finally, there's something called telomeres. You've heard of telomeres, they're at the end of our chromosomes. They protect fraying of chromosomes and chromosomes sticking to each other. It's a major landmark discovery. Elizabeth Blackburn, brilliant Australian scientist, and two other scientists got the Nobel Prize in Medicine or Physiology in 2009. Shortened telomeres are linked with accelerated cellular aging. Longer telomeres, you're going to live longer. And here's the very interesting story from the U.S. Nurses Health Study published in 2017. Increased caffeine intake is linked with shortened telomeres. Increased coffee intake is linked with longer telomeres. It's not the caffeine. Coffee has 800 to 1,000 constituents, many of which in animal studies are found to be helpful. I had an interview about a year ago from a reporter in the United Kingdom. She said, Dr. Chopra, you write about coffee. You've written a book called The Big Five, 40 pages on coffee. I want to interview you, but specifically, I want to ask you about this shop in Adelaide, Australia, where the guy has a coffee and it's called kick-ass coffee. Kick-ass coffee. It has five grams of caffeine in one drink. This drink which I'm enjoying of coffee has 65 milligrams. It has 80 times the amount of caffeine. 10 grams is lethal. 
you'll die. He apparently takes a little history before serving you the coffee. He's not a doctor. And instead of kick-ass coffee, I said, you know what I would suggest? We term it kick the bucket coffee. People can die drinking this coffee. So I'm going to stop here. I've probably gone a little bit over eight minutes because of the cat in this coffee. So cheers. Drink your coffee. Enjoy it. It's a superfood. My latest book, which I've just submitted to the literary agent, is going to be called Coffee, the Magical Elixir, Facts That Will Astound and Perk You Up. Cheers. <laughs>